So uh, how big an issue is this? Uh, did the president over push it, under push it? Did the Eagles overdo it, really overdo it, especially when they wanted to reschedule to something next week, knowing full well that the president would be rather busy? Let's get the read from sports agent extraordinaire Doug Eldridge. What do you think, Doug? Hi, Neil. Nice to see you. Uh, you know, I, I think this is culturally significant, but not historic. Larry Bird took a pass in the 80s and famously joked, if the president wants to see me, he knows where to find me. Tom Brady has taken a pass in the past. Uh, what I think this is perhaps really doubles down on is just how emblematic it is in terms of the platform, pedestal, reach, and influence that professional athletes have in modern society. 30 years ago, Jordan was pressured. Hey, why aren't you using your platform to have a, a more vocal stance on, on pressing urban issues? And, and in a moment of unflinching capitalism, Jordan smiled and said, why should I? Republicans buy shoes too. Now, if you fast forward three decades later to, to the present day, athletes are absolutely on the opposite end of the spectrum using that very platform to advance the very social issues that, that, that impact their communities the most. I would say that that, that ultimately what this comes back to is that athletes have a scope and a reach that they've never had before, and they're certainly exercising and using it. You know, Doug, I'm just wondering though whether the more successful among those athletes, the ones who can risk and, 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 and roll the dice on either kneeling during a national anthem or, or raising a fist or whatever, some are considering now to get around these new rules the NFL has or to spite them, are ruining it for players who don't have that kind of uh, financial latitude. What do you think? Well, as you and I discussed not too long ago, there's a lot of ambiguity in the, in the rule revision as it currently stands. Hopefully there's, go, there's going to be some subsequent follow-up and some detail because ambiguity leads to opportunity, which at least up to this point has led down the, down the wrong path. In terms of each player's choice, it is a very individual choice. And one thing that I would point out, in Blake's lead-in, he, he read uh, the tweet from Tory. Some of the, the most vocal players, to be obje objective and fair and to really parse feelings from facts here, some of these players that have been the most vocal have also been the same ones that have led by action and deed, not just by word. Tory, for example, uh, spearheads a nonprofit that provides school supplies for underprivileged elementary school kids. Chris Long, the white defensive end who's taken a very vocal stance, donated every regular season game check, totaling more than $1 million this past season. And Malcolm Jenkins, the, the third member of, of the vocal triumvirate, Malcolm led the Players Coalition, which really was ultimately responsible for the NFL committing seven years and $89 million of investment in pressing social issues. So there really is a balance here between the feelings and the facts. Obviously, the, the data is in. A huge portion of America, quite frankly, rightly feels that players should show respect during the anthem. But let's not paint with such an overly broad brush that we then go to vilify those players as being wrong. They might not be doing what you feel is right, but at least as the way the rule was written up to now, they were exercising their right. The devil in the, will be in the details, as we always joke. And mm -hmm. I'm anxious to see how the NFL tightens the language surrounding what is and is not permissible as it relates to the anthem policy. Doug Eldridge, thank you. We'll see what they do. Uh, they're between a rock and a hard place on this. That is for sure.